So the intro part could be really arranged a hundred different ways and all of them would be correct. But with the arrangement that I've done here, I wanted it to reflect a couple of things. Firstly, I wanted it to be true to the album so that when you play it, it is pretty close to the sound that you hear on the album you know, as close as we can make it with one guitar. And secondly, I wanted it to be something that I think that Metallica themselves might play if they ever played this live. Now, bear in mind, they never play this intro live. It's always a backing track. They always play exactly that album track when they do play it live, so that it's big and huge. Um, but, you know, I did want it to reflect something that I thought would be feasible that they would play live. So nothing crazy and, you know, virtuoso or anything. Um, just staying true to the album. So with that said, let's get into this. We're going to start, I play all this strictly finger style, no pick. Um, if you can come up with a way of doing some of the bass notes with a pick and maybe hybrid picking it, then feel free to try that. But I feel most comfortable just doing this straight finger style with no pick. So we're going to start with a G chord. So all of these chords are, or all of these notes are basically just notes out of chords here at the beginning so you could think of this as a as a g chord but we're only going to pick a couple of notes out of here we're going to hit the g on that bottom string with our thumb and then with the first and second finger pick the open g and b strings okay so there's our g chord then we're going to move up to an a minor but we don't have to fret the whole a minor chord we can just hit the uh, first fret and the second fret on the g and the b string with the open a string and now we're going to go what you could think of right away, it kind of has this shape of a B minor bar chord, right? But it's not really. What it is, is a G chord, but we're going to put B in the bass, right? If you hit a B minor, it's not quite right. It's actually a G with a B in the bass. That's the sound that they're going for. But we're just selecting notes out of that. So we're selecting the third fret on the B string and the fourth fret on the G string. That's out of our G chord. And then popping a B in the bass. Okay, so that's what that chord actually is. It's a uh, G with B in the bass. And then, so, so far we have this. And now we're going to come up to a C chord. This is just a basic C bar chord um, in the A shape. But we're not worried about doing the whole thing. We just need to get that C on the third fret of the A string, bar the fifth frets on the G and the B. Okay. And then we do that. So... And the only thing to note there is when I hit that C, I kind of roll up those so I don't pluck them all at the same time. I kind of go, uh, so string five, three, and two, one after the other really quick, just to kind of separate them and give it a little bit more of a, a, a flow there. And then, so we go up those three notes. Then you, with your pinky, hit the sixth fret on the B string. And then we're gonna hit, take our pinky off and go hammer pull from the fifth and the sixth. Okay. And then we come back to that G with the B in the bass, A minor again, but then we can snap our first finger off to get that open B. Okay, so there's the first two measures, and those two measures repeat, uh, we have four lines really in this intro, and every time that a new line happens, these two measures are the exact same. So we have this. Okay, now to finish off this first line, what we're going to do is come up to an E in the C shape. So we're taking a C shape and sliding it up to an E. So what we're doing is really all that we have to do here, we're not going to use our pinky though, leave that off so that we're going to be able to hammer with that at the very end of this chord. So we're going to come up to the uh, fifth fret on the B string, fourth fret on the G, and sixth fret on the D. Okay, so we've got that. And now I start this by uh, pinching the low string with the B string and then come down to the G string, D string, and then I do another pinch. So the low string and the D string and do a quick hammer with my pinky. So that measure. And then we come down to a D in the C shape. So same chord shape. We're just going to move it down a whole step and we are going to put our pinky down this time. Now to simulate the harmony guitars that are on the album, uh, we're going to pinch two strings at the same time. So we're going to go the A and the D string, and then we're gonna go the D and the G string, and then the G and the B. So we have this. And we just do that twice. Okay, and there's our first line. So nice and slow, our first line.
Okay, second line starts off the exact same. We just do all this. Okay, now we keep our second finger there and we're gonna put our first finger down on the second fret of the A string and then we're gonna pinch that A string with the open B. Come down to that fretted note that we have on the G string. Come up to the third fret on the D string and come down and hit both second frets on the G and the B. And then I switch my fingers uh, to, and we're really thinking this is an A chord at this point. Um, but we're gonna hit those two second frets on the G and the B again, along with a pinched open A. Okay, and then we can do a harmony line here too. Um, but just before we get into that, let's just, I'll just quickly play that little bit again. Okay, then to finish that off, we're gonna come up to the uh, B and the E. And then f bar with your pinky, the fifth frets on the two high strings. And then just repeat those same three pinches twice. Okay, so that second line is this. Okay, third line, start off the exact same. Now we're gonna do a jump up to an A chord, and you can think of this as an A major bar chord at the fifth fret, but I just do it uh, the top four strings, and because I use the open A as that bass note. So I pinch the open A with the high string, come down to the B string, G string, and then I pinch again the open A with the G string, and use my pinky to hammer down onto the seventh fret of the G string. Okay, so even though I'm fretting that D string, I actually don't play the D string. And then I move this same shape down a whole step, but then I bar because we're moving to a G and we want that low G note to finish this off. So what I do is I pinch that low G note on the bottom string along with the D string and the G string. And then I just do that same going up a, a string set trick to simulate the harmony that's going on there. So up to the G and the B, and then the B and the E and just repeat that. Okay, so that final little bit of that last line. And then our fourth and final line, again, start off the same. Now here, we go to an E minor chord and I pinch the bottom E string with the D and the G strings. And then I come up to the G and the B. Then we have to switch to a G. I just take the top three strings of a G chord and I go G and B strings, and then the B and the E. And then I bar uh, like I did uh, that same shape in the third line. And I come, start off the same. So I hit that low G again, and then the, the D and the G, up to the G and the B string then the two high strings, and back to G and B. Okay, so that E minor and G looks like this together. Okay, now we switch uh, to a C chord here. And we're gonna start off with a C in basically what's the G form. You could think of taking a G, sliding it up to a C here. Um, but we don't have to play all these, of course. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we want that C on the 8th fret of the low string as our bass note. And we're going to hit the 8th fret on the B string along with the 5th fret on the G string. Okay, we pinch all those. And then take off your pinky so you get two 5th frets on that, uh, on the G and the B. And now we want to hit the 7th fret on the high string along with the 5th fret on the B. And then what I do to keep that bass note ringing as I hit it again, as I make a position shift, because we need the 10th fret on the high string. And then I, so I'm hitting that bottom bass note again, along with the 8th fret on the B and the 10th fret on E. And then I just, I'm thinking E, uh, you know, C in the E form here at that point. Put my second finger down on that G string and just hit those final uh, triad there to finish this off. So it's like this.
Okay, so the fourth line, probably the most complicated due to this C in the G form. It's a little bit of stretching. Um, but I'll play that fourth line nice and slow, and then we'll move on to the heavy stuff. Flick your distortion on, and let's get going with the verse riffs. first heavy riff in this track isn't actually that hard to pull off. We're just doing a lot of low E palm muting along with some power chord stabs along the two bottom strings. So we're going to start off by palm muting the low E six times and then power uh, stab the power chord on the third fret G. Okay, so one E end of two E end and then repeat that rhythm on beats three and four, three E end of four E end, but just move that power chord down a half step to F sharp on the second fret. So there's our first measure. Okay, measure two starts off the same. And then we just go two palm mutes on E, down to the second fret, and repeat that. Two palm mutes on E, second fret power chord. Okay, so our first two measures. Okay, so the trickiest part is that everything's on up beats, right? We've got one E and a two E and three E and a four E and one E and a two E and three E and four E and. Okay, so you just have to feel all those on up beats um, and not downs. Uh, so that's probably the trickiest part there. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, and that's the same with the second half of the riff. The second half of the riff, the next two measures are the exact same, except our final power chord. Instead of hitting two hits on that second fret, we're gonna go down to the first fret. So the second half is like this. Okay, just our final power chord stab is going down to the first fret power chord. And there's our four measures, and then that just repeats. So again, the only thing to really note is make sure you're hitting all those on, on the up beats, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, um, and once you got that flowing, then you're good to go. And then that repeats four times right off the track, uh, right off of the beginning of the track. And then we get into this next riff that's, uh, it's a little obscured on the recording. Um, but yeah, I slowed it down, really listened to it. And, uh, you know, the tabs out there are pretty close. Um, but it, there's definitely, you know, a little bit wrong with most of the ones that I see. So what we're going to do is hit an open, uh, on the low string to a three. Okay, and now there's a definite E palm mute here before we hit the fifth fret. And then two more palm mutes on that E. Okay, so our first two beats. So it's one and two E and uh, go back to the third fret. Two more E palm mutes. And then go up to from the second to the third fret power chord. Okay, so the timing, one and two e and a three and a four and. Now our next measure starts off the same. Until there, then we're just gonna do this. And we just grab the G power chord, but immediately slide it. So it's just a grace note. So it's just like three, four. So two quarter notes there where we're sliding down into an F sharp. So that's, uh, so the whole thing together. Right, and just notice to the palm muting, um, just it, the first two notes aren't palm muted. And then we're gonna put our palm mute on. Then take it off for these power chords. Put the palm mute back on and take it off. 
Okay. And that repeats four times again at the head of the track as well. Um, and the fourth time you just do one of those grace note slides into the F sharp, right? So that fourth time you would just play it like this. And then we're into the verse. And the verse, you just play both of those riffs twice, respectively. And we've already covered all that, so we don't really have to get into the verse. And then the next thing is the chorus. So here's a quick playthrough of that, and then we'll talk about it. The chorus is really just a couple of measures repeating. So once we talk about the first two measures, you've got it. Um, we're going to start with an E power chord, come up to the third fret power chord G, and then just a low E string palm mute as we move up to a B flat power chord on the first fret of the A string, come up to the second fret, back to the first. So it's just a little one, two, one at the end there. So it's like this. Okay, and then we're just gonna stay on that first fret and palm mute it for a whole measure. Okay, and that's really all we have to do. And uh, so you wanna be thinking, you know, one and a two and a three and a four and a four notes of beat there on those uh, palm mute chugs. So uh, nice and slow, that those two measures look like this. And then we just repeat that again, uh, repeat it two more times. And then the last time, you just want to start with the, the same, but then just stab that first fret power chord one more time, and then we're going to get into another verse. And that's what happens for the first chorus. But the second chorus, we want to get out of that into a little halftime interlude section that only lasts for four measures before we get into our solo. Uh, so the second chorus, we get out of that the same. And then we get into this. And then into our solo. So these power chords, we want to go up to uh, D on the fifth fret of the A string. And then come down to the third fret. Then the second fret, A. Okay, and getting your palm mute makes that sound really cool too. Ta just stab the D with no palm mute, and then put it on. And then take it off for the A, right? And then we want to walk up some power chords here. We're going to come down to the G power chord, A power chord, B power chord, C power chord. Right, so we're just walking up third fret of the low string, A, second fret of A, and then back up to the third fret. Okay. Then we come down to a B again, second fret, down to our G, A, and then we're into our solo. So nice and slow, that little interlude section. And then we get into the rhythm underneath the solo. Now, for those of you that want to play this exactly like it is on the album, this is a little complicated due to the picking pattern and the rhythm of it. Um, and they don't play this live, so I'll give you the live alternative if you want to do it that way instead. They've James has kind of simplified this for himself. Um, but this is the way it sounds on the album. It goes like this. Okay, and then that all repeats around starting on the E again. So um, we've got this rhythm that the classically correct way of playing it would be down, down, up, up, down. So it's a one and a two E end. And then repeat that for beats three and four. Three and a four E end, okay? Now that, to get it up to speed, might take you some wood shedding. And I'll give you an option with the picking two. Instead of going down, down, up, up, down, you could go down, down, up, down, up. It does away with a little bit of pick movement um, so that your pick might not get tripped up, but it also might throw you out of time. Um, so you might have to woodshed that just to make sure that you're staying in time exact. 
Um, now, as far as what we're doing, we're just starting on an E power cord and we're holding that for four and a half measures. And then, so, so we've got, just got this E. One, and a two, E, and three, and a four, E, and, and do that for four and a half measures. Move up to an A power cord on the fifth fret. And do that for one and a half measures. Come down to a G for one measure, down to an F sharp for one measure. Uh, and that's eight measures, and then that eight measures just repeats. Now, I have seen some tabs that say that there's a couple of measures in, of 6-4 in there just to reflect the odd time, uh, the odd amount of beats that were holding the E and the A. Um, however, if you put in a couple of measures of 6-4, then you end up with an odd number of total measures of 7, right? So I prefer thinking in half measures just so that I end up with a nice eight measures that make sense for my brain. But you can think however you want. It doesn't really matter. It all comes out to be the same, right? Um, so that is how it is on the album, uh, and live, they just get rid of that tie over the beat. So it, it would just be down, down, up, down, up, down, one and a two, the end, and then repeat that for beats three and four, three and a four, the end, right? So, and then take that all around, you know, hold that for four and a half beats up to the A. Right, so you'll agree with me, I'm sure that that's an easier way of playing it. Your pick isn't going to get tripped up very easily and you can play that nice and fast. So that's a nice way of playing it live just to simplify it and make sure that you can bang it out. Um, so there is the rhythm underneath the solo. Like I said, you take those eight measures and repeat them. And then we get into this uh, thing. Okay. So the what we're doing is E power chord, F sharp, and G. We just have those three power chords. Okay, and now most tabs and the way I see most people play this is very just eighth notey, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and then repeat that again for a second time. However, on the recording, um, and if you listen to Cliff Burton's bass, it's very apparent that it's not exactly just straight like that. There's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a syncopation there, like one and uh. So what I do is I hit the E power chord and then a quick E palm mute before I hit the F sharp. Just like that. And then that's what they're doing on the album. Live, they may have simplified it, you know, more to just that straight eighth note feel. But uh, yeah, on the album, there's definitely more of a syncopated feel there. And that kind of corresponds with that original feel that they had on, underneath the solo too, right? That... Right, it all goes together. Um, but again, you know, you can take your pick how you want to perform that one. And that is the whole rhythm underneath the solo. And then the harmony line kicks in and it's that same rhythm that we already played underneath the solo all over again twice. And then we get back into that. Play that twice. And then just let a big E power chord ring out for four measures. And then we just start into another verse and, you know, chorus and all that. It goes around again. So the last thing we have to talk about is the outro. And the outro, uh, you know, after our final chorus, we get into this fight fire with fire, fight fire with fire. It just keeps going around and around. And that's just the same thing that we had in our chorus, that E, G, E palm mute. And then back and forth between the B flat and the B. And we just play that a total of 16 times. And then do one stab after you've played it 16 times, do one stab on that B flat. And then bring out that E power chord. And then we're gonna come up to an E power chord on the seventh fret of the A string. And we go. Okay, so it's one triplet two, three triplet four, one. And just slide it and you're done. Um, so I just go down, up, down, up. And then I kind of choke it a little bit. And then, and that's it.
And there is one little lead thing to talk about in that outro too, guys, just in case you're playing this with a band and you both want to have your parts down. Um, when you come out of that 16 repetitions of this, right, uh, right on that final B flat hit, there's a little lead harmonic dive bomb. And it's because it's diving, it's hard to tell the exact pitch that it might have started at. But to me, it sounds like it's probably the harmonic on the fifth fret of the B string. And you just dive it. And it's you could also find that the same pitch on the seventh fret of the high E string if you wanted to play it there. They're the, they're the same pitch. Um, but to me, that's the harmonic that it sounds like. So you'll just hit that and dive it with your bar. If you've got a whammy bar, hopefully you got a floating trem for that and away you go. If not, maybe just put in a random slide or something cool. Um, but yeah, it's good to know that that's in there. Hi, hi everyone. I hope you're really getting a lot out of this Fight Fire with Fire guitar lesson. If you want to learn every Metallica song with full and accurate tab, then you've come to the right channel. Be sure to hit like and subscribe so that you see more of this because I'm going through every track from every studio album. I'm also covering a lot more bands than just Metallica, so take a look through some of the lessons and see what you dig. And I am now taking donations, so consider donating if you want to see me put this stuff out even faster, because as you can imagine, this can take quite a bit of work, and all donations are going to go to the right place, help me put out a better product and faster for you, and I can get to all these recommendations that are coming in daily. And now, thank you very much for watching, let's get back at it. Kirk Hammett used a lot of wah pedal on the original recording for this solo, but I chose to play it without a wah just so that you could really hear the notes, what was going on. Now, the original recording uh, as well, there's is one of his sloppier solos that I've really transcribed so far, and there's a couple of spots that's kind of impossible to tell exactly the notes that he was going for, but I'll point those out as we go. But the solo starts off with a ninth fret bend on the G string, use your third finger, and just tremolo pick that. <laughs> Okay, and then you're going to gradually bend the string up a whole step. Okay, you do that for about a measure and a half. And then, the way I can make this sound on the recording, and this is one of the places where the uh, lick that he plays isn't exactly quite there on the recording. There's just a little bit of slop. As he releases this string, there's almost like an open D that inadvertently rings and kind of obscures the next note that he's doing. Um, but as near as I can tell, to make it sound like the album, what I do is I tremolo strum, and then I also keep that tremolo strum going as I release and come down to the 7th fret. And then I do, I'd come back up to the ninth and repeat that bend, release to 7. So it's really, really fast. And then you end on the ninth fret of the D string. Okay, so really slow, it's gonna look like this. Okay, now he slides that and then comes back up into this position and we're really just playing around in this uh, pentatonic box here at the seventh fret. And uh, so we start the next lick by uh, pulling off from nine to seven on the G string again. Come down to the ninth fret on the D string back up to the 7th on the G, and then we kind of go backwards here through the pentatonic. It's uh, kind of tricky to keep this clean. We go 9-7, pull off again on the G string, 10-7 on the B string, and then 10-7 on the E string. Okay, so, so far it's like this. Come back down to the B string, 10-7. Then we bend the ninth fret on the G string, come back up to the B string, 7, 10-7, pull off. And then come down to the G string, 9, 7, pull off. Come down to the D string, 9. Back up to the G string, 7. And then 9, 7, pull off. 2, 9, 7, pull offs on the D string. And then come down to the A string, 9, 7. Pick both of those. And then 9, 7, pull off. Come down to the 5th fret. 7th fret on the low string. Okay, so there's our first phrase. Um, I'll put it together with the little tremolo 9th uh, fret. at the, And then it sounds like this. Now, 
Now we're gonna stay on that low string on the seventh fret to start our next phrase. The next phrase is gonna sound like this. Okay, so we start with that seventh fret. Now go hammer from five to seven. Come up to the A string, five, seven, and slide up to the ninth fret. And then come up to the D string, seven, nine. Pull back off to the seven. And then come down to the A string, nine. Seven, nine on the D string. And then seven, nine on the G string. Okay. Okay, now we get into the next phrase that's really similar to the first one that we had. Um, I'll just give it a quick play here and then we'll break this down. And now this lick, we start off with the ninth fret bend on the G string again, and then come up to the seventh fret on the B string. And then this is another one of those licks on the recording that's a little bit sloppy and hard to tell exactly what notes he was going for. But as near as I can tell, he was just gonna do a nine to seven pull off again on the G string. So we have that little, right? Very Kirk Hammity repeating type thing. Yeah, he likes to do all that sort of thing, so it fits his style. So we, now we bend that ninth fret again, seventh on the B string, and 10, seven pull off. And now we wanna do a little hammer pull here on the high string, seven, 10, seven. Come back, come back down to the B string, 10, seven. And then we're gonna repeat this ninth fret bend on the G string. Go back into the B string, seven, 10, seven pull off. And then come down to the G string, nine, seven pull off. D string, nine, seven, nine. Back up to the G string, seven. Pull off to the nine, seven. Back down to the D string just for the ninth fret. Back up to the G string, seven. And then nine, seven pull off. And then we're gonna go nine, bend it, release, pull off to seven, and end with the ninth fret on the D string. So that whole thing together sounds like this. Okay, so from there we're going to slide back into that same note. So we ended on the ninth fret of the D string. We're gonna slide it down and slide back into it. Seventh fret on the G string. And then and we're gonna go 11 on the G string, 10 on B. Up to 14 on the B string, 12 on the high string, and then 15 on the B, 14 on the high E. Okay, and once we're worked up to that high, then we're gonna sit in this position for a while and do some a uh, little pull off lick here along the high string. So we go 15 to 14, pull off on the high string. Come down to the B string 15, back up to 14 on the high string. 15 pull, pull off to 14, 17 pull off to 14, 19 pull off to 14. Okay, so we've got one E and a two E and a three E. Now, again, on the recording, there's it's almost impossible to tell exactly the next couple of notes here, but as near as I can tell, he was doing this. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit 17, go up to 19, and then pull off through 17 and 19. And then come down to the 15th fret on the B string, back up to the 14th fret on the high string. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... And then we come back up to 17, pull off to 14, 19, pull off to 14, 17, pull off to 14, 15 on that B string, back up to the high string 14. And then we're gonna bend the 17th fret on the high string four times. And then just once unbent. Okay, so that whole phrase. Now, we're gonna finish this off with uh, probably the most complicated lick of the solo. Um, and it's kind of a weird one because he starts off in E minor and he kind of morphs it into an E major scale and then morphs out of it back into the E minor scale to finish it off. Okay, so what we wanna do, and I'll play it slow here first, just so you've got it in your ears and then we'll break it down. So nice and slow, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so what we're gonna do, start off 
with a 14th fret on the high string, and then 17 to 14 pull off, 15 to 14 pull off, double pick that 14th fret. Now we're going to come down to the B string, 17, 15, and then go 17, 15, 14, really quick pull off through all of those. So we've got this. Now this is where we morph it into an E major scale. We hit the 16th fret on the B string and pull off to 14. Come down to 16 on the G string, back up to 14 on B. Come back down to the G string, 16, 14. 16 on the D string. And now we kind of change into a three note per string scale run starting at this point. And to do that, we come back up to the G string and hit 14. And then 13 by sliding down. Come back and hammer pull again from 14 to 13. So we've got this. And then we go down to the D string, 16, and then we triple pick the 14th fret. There's three hits on that re on the recording on that 14th fret. And then we come down to the 13th fret, and then we go 16, 14, 13, and then come down to the A string, 16, 14, 12. And then we repeat that. And then as we slide down to 10, and then tw uh, 14, 12, 10, slide down to eight, or sorry, nine, and then 12, 10, nine, slide down to seven, and then we end with a 10, nine, seven pull off. And then he slides that final note, okay? So I know that's probably a little bit confusing as we're playing it so slow, but I'll play through the whole thing now that we went through it. I'll play through the whole thing nice and slow, and then we've got it. So here we go. Okay, and that whole lick again up to speed, just so that you've really got it under your fingers and in your ears, it goes like this. Right, and remember to put your wah pedal on and it will sound just like the album. So that's the solo, guys. It's a nice short one. I don't even think it's 30 seconds long. It's a nice short solo. Um, and now we have to talk about the harmonized guitar lines that happen after the solo. So here is James Hetfield's part, and then we'll talk about Hammett's. Okay, so Hetfield starts in the 12th position, and we're going to triple pick the 15th fret to start with. Okay, so hit that 15th fret three times, and then we get into it, and it's a descending thirds line. Okay, so we go 15 and 12, then 14 and 15 on the B string, come back up to the high string 12, 14 on B, and then 15 and 12 both on B. Okay, so we have this. Roll your finger, get the 12 on the high string again, back to 14 on B, 15 and 12 on the B string. Okay, uh, and then what we're going to do, we have a quick slide that he does, and just slide from the 14th to the 12th on B, come down to 14 on G, back up to 12 on B, uh, two, two hits on the 14th on G, and then 12 on G. Okay, so that whole thing so far. Okay, now we repeat the 14 twice, back to 12 on G. And now, on the recording, I think, I, I think live they've simplified this and they got, they've gotten rid of some of the, uh, uh, the little flashier parts, but on the album there's a quick hammer between 12 and 14 on the G, come up to the B string 12, and now two pull-offs between 13 and 12. And then come down to the G string again, 14 and 12. And then we're going to repeat that hammer uh, up to the B string, repeat those pull-offs. And then 14 on G, come down to the 11th fret on G. Okay, so, so far we have this.
Okay, now we're gonna have to change our fingering here because our first finger is gonna stay on the 11th fret, just like Hetfield does it. And what we're gonna do is hammer from 12 and 14 on the G string again. And then we're gonna come up and hit 13 on the B string, 12, 14, come down to the G string, 14, 12, and hit that 12 twice to 11. Okay, so repeat that 12 to 14 hammer on the G string, 12 on the B, come down to the G string, 14, 12, two hits on 11, back up to 12 on the G. Okay, and now the trickiest little part of this um, is to go from 11 to 12, or sorry, 11 to 14 hammer, and then pick that 14th fret again. And then we want to go 12, 14 hammer on that G string to the 11th fret. And then we come up to the 12 on B, 12 on G. Okay, and then that's where the whole thing repeats again. Um, so, so far we've got this. Okay, and then it just repeats around the whole thing exactly the same. Um, and then the second time, we just grab that final note on the G string and slide it, and there's your harmony line. Now, Kirk Hammett's harmony line sounds like this. Okay, so Kirk Hammett's is mirroring everything that James is doing, just a third higher. So we don't have to really beat this over the head too much. I think you've probably got it for the most part if you've been following along this long. Uh, but we're just going to start on the 19th fret now, right? It's a third higher. We, we're on B, a third higher than James is starting note G. So we're going to triple pick that 19th fret and just fall in thirds again. So 19, 15, 17, come down to the B string 19, 15 on the high, 17 on B. 19 and 15 on B. Then roll your finger to get that high string 15 down to 17 on B. 19 to set, uh, 15, both on B. Um, so, so far we have this. And now what we want to do is we're, again, just like James did, we have a little slide from 17 to 15 on B. Come down to 14. And then come back up to the 15th fret. Okay, and then we come down to the G string, 17, 17, and 16. Okay, so. And then repeat that 17, 17, 16. Okay, and then we're gonna uh, do 16 and 17 hammer. Come up to the B string, 15, and then two quick pulls between 17 and 15. Come down to 17 and 16 again. Then repeat that hammer, pulls. Come down to the 14th fret. And then we go 16, 17, hammer. Roll that finger to get 17 on the B string. 15, come down to G. Right, so you want to get 17, 16 twice. 14, repeat that hammer, 16 to 17. Then 15 on B, come down to the G string, 17. 16, two hits on 14. 16. And then we want to go 14, 17, hammer. Repeat the 17th fret, then 16, 17 hammer to the 14th fret, 15 on B, 16 on G. And that's the whole harmony line there. So nice and slow, looks like this. And then you just repeat that again, note for note, for a second repetition. And then you just grab that final note the second time on the 16th fret of the G string and slide it down. And there is the harmony lead lines.
Once again, thanks for watching this Metallica guitar lesson. Fight Fire with Fire is an awesome opening track to a classic album, and now you know how to play it note for note. I'll be back soon with more of your favorite tracks. Until then, keep rocking. I'll see you next time.